Chapter 32, Section 1, Introduction For as long as she could remember, Melba Patillo had wanted to ride the merry-go-round at Fair Park in her hometown of Little Rock, Arkansas. But whenever she asked her mother or grandmother to take her, they said it was not possible. So one day, when Melba was five, she decided to ride on her own. Melba and her family were at Fair Park on a picnic. It was the 4th of July. While the grumps were setting up tables of food, Melba made her escape. She later recalled, I had had my eye on one horse in particular, Prancer, the one I dreamed about during all those months I saved up the five pennies I needed to ride him. Melba tried to give her money to the man working the ride. There's no space for you here, he told her coldly. When she pointed out that Prancer's saddle was empty, the man got angry. He banged so hard on the counter that the pennies fell off. You don't belong here, he yelled. Melba's knees shook. She noticed other angry faces glaring at her as though she had done something wrong. She ran back to her family. I was so terrified, she said, that I didn't even take the time to pick up my precious pennies. At five, I learned that there was to be no space for me on that merry-go-round, no matter how many saddles stood empty. Melba Patillo was a black child in the segregated South. In the 1940s, when this event took place, African Americans throughout the South suffered under a harsh system of racial discrimination. Jim Crow segregation laws not only kept blacks out of amusement parks like Fair Park, they also separated blacks from whites in most public facilities, including schools, libraries, and hospitals. In this chapter, you'll learn what life was like for African Americans in the post-war years in the South, and the rest of the country. You also learn how things